Yeah, Equestria. It's a really fine place. Full of ponies. Such cute ponies. Look around, Twilight. Everything the friendship touches will be your kingdom. Queendom? Whatever, you'll be the boss. But you will be tested time and again. You will have to face many dangers and many fears. So I asked Discord to swing by and help test some of your basic fight or flight instincts. And I know what you're thinking. That he's going to turn into a cheesy quesadilla, or a ladybug with eyes instead of spots, or something like that. But no. The terror I have in mind is far worse. It is the bane of brilliant minds. The challenge to the very concept of harmony. An image that has driven whole groups to murder. Behold! The square root of two! <coughs> eh, we'll work on that. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll understand why this mathematical idea fits with our chaos spirit rather well, and why it can be so dang terrifying. So, what does the square root of 2 have to do with Discord? Well, to understand this, we need to get into the proper mindset. And to do that, we need to look at the philosophy of Pythagoras of Samos. Pythagoras, what is it with you always with the triangles? Your solution to everything is triangles. There are problems in life that can't be solved with triangles. He is indeed renowned for his proof supporting the Pythagorean theorem and multiple contributions to early mathematics. How early? Well, not only did most of the equations we take for granted not exist during his era, they were a few centuries away from the expression of zero. They had no idea how to express nothing as something. Which is a big deal for someone like Pythagoras, who didn't just view numbers as points in a sequence. To him, numbers had unique identities. Mathematics itself was the relation between these identities and, once understood, showed insight into the universe's nature. So strong were his beliefs that he founded a cult in Crotona of southern Italy in 530 BCE, where he and his followers explored the identities of numbers. They even proudly displayed the philosophy, all is numbers. For an example, let's look at our various alicorns. You start off with one. On its own, it is simple and absolute, but it is also unknowable because there's nothing with which to contrast. One only begins to have its own identity when contrasted against the second or other. Two is the number of opinion, as we saw in Sparkle 7. I said we could do it ourselves, but some ponies are a bit stubborn. But this didactic relationship is fraught with conflict, as the one wants to remain close while the second seeks to establish its own identity. That's how you wind up with, shall we say, a spat. Luna, I will not fight you! You must lower the moon! It is your duty! I have but one royal duty now! To destroy you! It's from this conflict that we get the third. It's not an immediate, spontaneous power. Rather, it develops over time and becomes a harmonizing force between the first two. That's right, three is the number for harmony. Yet it is created by the fourth, which represents both the larger world and stands as the identity of justice, similar to how all four alicorns would decide the fate of Equestria. Five is right out! Actually, there's an identity for five as well. Pythagoras came up with the concept that numbers had genders. Even numbers were female and odd numbers were male. Five is the outcome of two and three, the first female and male pairing. So much like a baby, the fifth represents marriage. If we go beyond the alicorn representation and focus on our lead ponies, six is the identity of creation. Given all the main six have done, both as individuals and as a group, I'd say that's a fair representation. But before I can add Spike into the mix, the various resources I've studied go strangely quiet. They often skip all the way to 10, which is considered to be the number for the universe and perfection. I have to wonder if there isn't some unspoken fear here. I mean, seven is a pretty frightening concept, because seven, eight, nine. Boo! Pythagoras held that all numbers, even those with remainders, could ultimately be expressed through ratios of whole numbers. This reinforced his view that the world operated under a default harmony. Here's where we get a bit of chaos in the mix. Pythagoras is as much myth as history, so the specifics are lost to time. It's said that a student of his, Hippasus of Metapotum, worked through a proof that actually disproved the theorem that seems so absolute. Mm, mathematical proofs aren't my strong suit, and there is a wealth of videos that talk about how Hippasus allegedly went about this process. I'll link several in the description. But here's the core tenet. 
The theory is that in its simplest form, the numbers in a ratio should not have any common factors. What Hippasus did was work through the square root of 2's ratio, and it turned out the two numbers would both be even, which should be impossible. The square root of 2 cannot be expressed in whole numbers. In fact, it can't be expressed in any finite form because it's an irrational number. By irrational, I don't mean that it tries to fly by jumping off a cliff and flapping its arms, or tries to argue that the Earth is flat, or that Bitcoin is a smart investment. Nope, it's a number that can't be written as a ratio, fraction, or other finite form. No matter how far you calculate it, the number just keeps going without repetition or conclusion. If you tried to write out the square root of 2, it would start with 1.4.1.2.1.3.5.6.7.2.3.7.3.0.9.5.0.4.8.8.0.6.8.7.2.4.2.0.9.6.9.8.0.7.8.5.6.9.6.7.8.7.3.1.7.6.6.7.8.7.
how might their views have developed if they'd wrestled with the idea that harmony isn't a natural default? Though we face a question, if Discord is meant to be so disruptive, does that excuse the actions he takes? I think not. I understand that you can't force Discord to stop being chaotic any more than you can force the square root of 2 to just end. He tried being non-chaotic and nearly disappeared. You're a creature of pure chaos! Being normal is destroying you! Stop it! Please! But Discord still has the power to choose how he employs his abilities, and he's often chosen poorly. The standout moments being terrorizing the School of Friendship and drawing together three villains to demonstrate Twilight's growth. Though his own power might be nearly infinite, his awareness is dangerously finite. He never even considered that while he was playing others, they might likewise play him. Why didn't you tell me? We're villains, duh. So if Discord's role is to undermine harmony or sabotage the flow of events that others take for granted, how can he be so enjoyable? Well, I think a lot of that comes from the fact that he's unapologetic for his role. I can do whatever I want, whenever I want. I'll do what I want, when I want, and how I want. I'm Discord. The master of chaos. Oftentimes in stories, we're attracted to figures who shun social norms because we think that's a kind of freedom. I rather value my melancholy. Used to be a personality trait one was allowed to have. Now one is required to grin and say things like, great. What we don't often cover is the consequence to this persona. I've uh, offended everybody there is to offend. Because if I don't, I'll lose the one friend I ever had. I need friendship. I especially need this one. No, 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 I need to leave! But there's another aspect to Discord stories. The triumph of those around him. Sometimes we celebrate them because they don't lament imperfection. If anything, they embrace it. Today was a disaster. But today was also the last day we're ever gonna have to do anything apart. From here on out, we'll be together. Or they affirm their beliefs rather than abandoning them because of an imperfection. We've learned that friendship isn't always easy, but there's no doubt it's worth fighting for. Oh, gag. Or they do the right thing unconditionally. All of my friends. After the way he has betrayed you, you still call him a friend? Release him! There's some debate as to whether or not Discord's reformation was intended or even part of the overall story. Yet having the benefit of looking back, I will say that while his reformation was hasty and awkward, he was an important addition to the show and that quasi-reformation improved the long-term enjoyment. Discord would be much less appealing if he were only a recurring villain, foiled and banished time and again. More than that, I like how the ponies stopped trying to beat him and learned how to work with him as part of their lives. Because just as the champions we celebrate represents ideas at their best, a character who represents the unexpected events in life is also important. You can point to Discord's influence and show how, just when you think you've got life all figured out, something new comes along and shakes up your entire view. But there's an element of hope as well when we see the characters wrestle with that doubt and emerge all the stronger. There will always be darkness in the world, but there will also always be those who find the light. It really does seem like you just might be ready for whatever comes next, your majesty. I think Discord represents a solid reason why this show attracted so many unexpected fans. We thought this would be a world that operated under a default harmony, without any real conflict. What we got was a world that might look that way on the surface, but a little time and attention saw that there were plenty of relatable struggles, doubts, and fallibilities. Discord embodies this idea in design, character, and role. And while there have been times that I wish his abilities could have been employed in a different way, I'm glad he's a part of French Biz Magic and will point to him as an example of why this show is so fun. At the very least, I think we can all agree that murder over math proof is the wrong reaction. I'm Silver Quill. Yeah! Thanks for watching.